Hi, everybody. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. My name is Lisa Travers, and I'm from Alliance Corporation. And uh, I have with me today Charlie Schultz, also from Alliance, and uh, Dean Richmond from Nextivity. Um, we're going to start the presentation out with Charlie doing a brief introduction to Alliance and our solutions for DAS and in building. And then uh, Dean will take over. Um, just a couple of networking, uh, sorry, uh, housekeeping questions. Um, we are recording the webinar, so I do intend to send out a link to a video afterwards. Uh, the second, um, we will be sending out, if you request it, a copy of the presentation. So if you'd like a PDF, just uh, send me a note. Um, and then thirdly, uh, re re regarding questions. So we will take questions throughout the webinar, and uh, you can submit them through the chat on the GoToWebinar console. If you have a question, just send it when you think of it. Um, and we will uh, read them out and take them as we go along. And if we can't um, answer your question right away, I'll let you know and we'll follow up with you afterwards. So um, without further ado, I'm going to ask Charlie to take over. Thank you. Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Again, my name is Charlie Schulz, and I head up Alliance's DAS and inbuilding program in the U.S. And we certainly appreciate the time. We know how valuable everybody's time is. And we, we're pretty excited about the topic. We think you're going to be as well. And what's going to be so exciting about it is we're going to be introducing CellFi by Nextivity. Uh, CellFi is the only carrier grade and approved smart cellular coverage solution. It deploys with category cable. It has a low total cost of ownership, and making, making it very easy to show a high ROI to the end users. This solution is what a lot of our customers, a lot of your customers in the middle prize have been looking for who've needed coverage indoors, but have not been able to figure out the best way to make it happen. And that's what we're going to be learning more about today. But first, let me just take a couple of moments for those of you not familiar with Alliance, just to introduce who we are. Alliance Corporation is one of the largest communication distributors in North America with operations in the US, Canada, and Mexico. We are founded in 1993. Our headquarters is in a suburb of Toronto. We have over 150 seasoned professionals in North America supporting all aspects of our business. We're very much focused on partnerships, our first starting with our, our manufacturing partners. We have over 100 leading manufacturers in the wireless industry. That enables us to provide complete solutions for everything from uh, site work, through broadbands and in-building and everything in between. And our results are quite impressive over the years. We have supported thousands of builds of cellular, DAS, and broadband, all done in support of all the top tier carriers, major OEMs, and WISPs. We support them directly and through our extensive network of value-added resellers. Alliance, our business proposition is broken into four main verticals. We've got a, fo a focus on the wireless infrastructure space, the DAS and indoor wireless with a special emphasis on public safety, uh, broadband wireless IoT, and wireline enterprise space. Within the DAS space, we offer everything needed to do a full DAS deployment. We support active and passive, we support cellular and public safety. We have antennas and passives, we have cable connectors, uh, racks, enclosures, primary and backup power supplies, as well as the, the various test equipment needed to do a DAS deployment. So we truly can be your one-stop shop. We mentioned our need for our focus on partnerships. Our partnerships start with manufacturers, but equally important are the partnerships we form with integrators and, com and contractors. We do not deal with end customers. We make it a point that we do not want to be competing with who our core customers are. We uh, take great pride in our ability to, to play the role of a matchmaker. We bring contractors and integrators together to take on solutions. When we do engage an end customer, we make sure we do our best to match them up with the best integrator and contractor to do the work for them and provide a source of leads. And of course, marry them up through the manufacturers that have got the right product to ensure a successful build. And you'll hear a lot of distributors talk about value add. 
We try to do more than talk about it. We start off by making sure that everyone in Alliance is knowledgeable in their field of expertise. So you're going to deal with more than just traditional uh, box movers. You're going to people who, have, who actually understand what they're talking about. We mentioned the, the national network of experienced DAS integrators to help in a DAS build. We are able to provide development support for your bombs to help you through the estimating process. And when it comes time to actually execute the program, we have multiple stocking locations. We do full kitting with uh, fulfillment for anything we don't have we can get. We deal with financing to help our customers out through flexible terms and financing when needed. Uh, as well as a complete array of e-commerce and value managed inventory programs. With Alliance, the customer's needs truly do come first, and that's what we try to make our, our success based on. And stay tuned for future. We've got uh, a YouTube channel for Alliance where we've done some previous webinars. This will be up there afterwards. In the meantime, please follow us on LinkedIn as well as Facebook. So to stay abreast of all the latest and greatest things we're doing. So with that, I'd like to hand the presentation over to Mr. Dean Richmond. He's the Senior Director of Marketing with Nextivity, and he's going to be the one that brings us the exciting news on cell five cellular covered solutions. Dean? Thanks, Charlie. Uh, uh, it's a pleasure being uh, here today with you folks. Um, just to jump right in, uh, just Many of you may have not have heard of CellFi, uh, as it is a solution that, and up until two years ago, was actually sold directly to the carriers uh, exclusively. So about two years ago, uh, we said uh, we're going to go ahead in the U.S. and Canada and enter into the channel. So uh, uh, we we've done that. Uh, and it's been an exciting ride for us as uh, we continue to build this out. Uh, Alliance uh, and, and Nextivity uh, joined together a few months ago uh, and actually had done some, some pilot work uh, prior to that agreement. So uh, we're really excited uh, about our work together and the, and the growth uh, of this channel for us. Our company uh, is about 11 years old. Uh, we're a global company. Uh, we've been uh, selling uh, an array of products uh, from the consumer all the way to enterprise, and we're going to go over uh, what those are today. Uh, we have uh, put our, our systems on 200 uh, different operators in 100 different countries. Um, where we pride ourselves is we started with the carrier, and this was a carrier-based solution uh, for them. So. Uh, where there are solutions out there uh, that uh, provide uh, the, this ability, they're not always doing the things uh, they should be doing and actually create noise into, into the network. So uh, we, we created this technology exclusively uh, for the carrier originally, uh, but realized that this is something that we could really expand out. So what are we solving? Uh, obviously, uh, we're all here to talk about um, uh, bad cellular coverage and, and why it, uh, it happens. So we're solving uh, the, the problem of, of physics here. Uh, as the, the cell companies have done a great job of putting new towers up and really uh, creating a breadth of coverage there, but they cannot uh, fix the problem of building materials, hills, trees, uh, you name it. Uh, whether it's an old building full of cement uh, or a new uh, building that's LEED certified and has all the steel in it, uh, those things are bad for uh, cellular coverage. Uh, in polls, uh, anywhere between 60 and 80 percent of uh, customers, uh, no matter type, what type of building, complain uh, of bad color, uh, coverage or poor coverage or spotty coverage, uh, drop coverage, you name it. Uh, everyone can relate and experience uh, uh, this in, in buildings that don't have a cellular solution. So uh, this, this category obviously has caught on fire and uh, uh, more and more solutions have entered the market uh, to, to address this. Um, we've uh, taken our own unique take on this and it all started with the chipset as we 
control uh, really every step of the way, the IP uh, around this. So uh, this is not a solution that we're uh, um, OEMing from China or anything like that. We have uh, created the technology from the ground up uh, re really with the carrier's help as well. So from the chipset to the embedded software to the radios and antennas uh, to mechanically how it works, uh, we've tried to make this a superior technology uh, that is unique in the marketplace, delivering uh, the best signal. Uh, at the same time, we've tried to make it, make it easier for the installers and integrators uh, by building tools, apps, and a cloud infrastructure that makes this install uh, easier to deploy and then easier to monitor afterwards. So again, what is CellFi? CellFi, what it stands for is uh, a best in perf performance uh, product uh, that has a low total cost of ownership, as, as Charlie mentioned er earlier. It's uh, ease of setup and scalability uh, uh, is, again, important. It's network uh, safe, carrier approved, carrier endorsed, uh, and it is self-organizing. It's an intelligent, uh, uh, rather than uh, a dumb um, uh, product, which just um, let's let's say boost and kind of blare signal. It is actually uh, reading at the millisecond uh, level and adapting to the environment always. All of this gives you 100% uh, peace of mind, whether you're the carrier, the integrator, or the end customer. So what is our what is our uh, lineup look like? Uh, the middle bar. This says home and small uh, business is actually where we started. And our current product is the CellFi Pro and Duo, but its predecessors were the RS1 and RS2. These were the carrier products, and uh, they uh, were built uh, in, for some carriers as customer retention uh, products. Uh, others uh, were around uh, their business solutions that all depend upon uh, where it was be, being deployed in the world. So this product uh, per uh, system uh, was up to 15,000 square feet of coverage. It was a two box system, it was wireless, uh, and it has done a phenomenal uh, job for us uh, globally uh, on this one. But uh, the carriers uh, where they love this product uh, wanted more on the business side and the, and the mobile side. So uh, about a year ago, uh, we introduced the Go uh, and Quattro products in the U.S. Canadian um, uh, markets. The Go product initially actually was uh, uh, done in Australia in its first generation, uh, and we'll go into that in more detail in a minute. But uh, last year was a year of growth for us uh, in putting new platforms. And this is actually what we're here to talk about. A little bit about Go, but mainly Quattro uh, today for this audience. But uh, we've been busy from a uh, platform. I think we put out 18 uh, new products in total uh, last year. Uh, and uh, the number is pretty close to that for this year as we built out uh, the full ecosystem. So core uh, to the solution is actually the software side as well. And we have uh, both a portal uh, that can be uh, used on a PC or, or a mobile device, and then we have an app uh, that helps with uh, setup and optimization uh, and error notif notifications. So uh, this is uh, built on the Microsoft Azure uh, platform, uh, meant for uh, both uh, the IT guy that uh, ends up uh, with the deployment in uh, their ecosystem or uh, the integrator uh, that is actually doing the initial setup and sometimes uh, will sell the service of maintenance uh, in many cases. Uh, this platform is a free platform to you all, to all that, that purchase the product uh, and allows uh, for push and uh, maintenance uh, management from your side, again, if you're planning to sell that as a service. So let's 
get into uh, Cellfi Go. And Cellfi Go um, has two versions of it, uh, both the N and the X. Uh, the M is for mobile and the X is a stationary. Uh, they're both NEMA 4 uh, products, uh, meaning that they uh, are dust and water tight, so they can go outdoors uh, in um, in their in installation. Uh, we've won five awards out of the gate uh, with this product, uh, and it's the highest performing uh, product in its class. It's 65 dB on the mobile application, and it's 100 dB in the fixed. Now, the reality is this product is actually the same product. M and X are identical. Uh, the difference is the software, and you can switch in between modes uh, between M and X if you are in uh, a scenario in which you would want to do that, uh, but uh, we are restricted uh, for when it is in mobile to be at a lower dB by the FCC. Uh, now, that's a higher gain that you see anywhere else on the market, and it is because of the type of technology that we use, we're allowed to get a little higher gain. You can see uh, the basic way it works is you have a donor antenna and a server antenna, and you can see all sorts of antennas there at the bottom of the screen. Uh, this can be a mobile product, it can be a marine product, it can be uh, a fixed building product, uh, depending upon the antennas uh, that you configure with the system. Um, these are the antennas that we endorse. These are the antennas that we build. Um, but uh, third-party antennas can be used with this product in your solution if you do have uh, favorites. We know uh, these antennas uh, are, are, are the readings that we publish uh, when you see the readings uh, in the specs about our products. Um, so uh, know that not all antennas are, are the same and not all uh, obviously, uh, deliver the best uh, performance. Dean, so if we can Dean sure. I, just one question. It's not specific to go, but I thought it was an outdoor-related question, so I'd interrupt. Sure. Sure. Um, if a customer, if a customer is in the interior, so I guess inside and outdoors has poor coverage as well, will this increase indoor better than outdoor due to the directional antenna-based communications? Well, great, great question. So uh, what we're doing is we're fi finding uh, the first, finding the best possible signal uh, uh, outdoors or indoors uh, that uh, the system can be run on. So there might be a part in your layout of uh, your campus or building or whatever, maybe the northeast corner of uh, the property gets terrible signal. It's got trees and and what have you, and there is no signal o over there, um, but a corner of your building's o over there. Now, your your signal is strongest on the southwest side, so you uh, point that antenna that way, uh, get that uh, donor antenna to bring it in from that direction, and yes, you can then, with the server antenna, Antenna, light up that area so you could actually have better coverage in that northeast corner of your building than you have in the northeast side of the lot outside. That is definitely possible, and we have seen that. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. uh, uh, but, but important to know if there's zero signal in the area, zero, none outdoors, then you definitely have a different problem and you're going to have to have a different solution on that just as this this uh this is an off-air solution this particular one where quattro has uh, a small cell element to it uh if if there are any questions on that as well and we'll get into that in a second all right so self i go uh x is both indoor outdoor uh, as I, I mentioned and uh, per unit covers about 15,000 uh, square feet or up to 15,000 square feet. Uh, you can put multiple units uh, in a location and you can see that dirty environment uh, to the left. Uh, we've done this in manufacturing environments, in mining environments, 
in farming and agricultural uh, areas uh, are kind of typical locations um, uh, to build out uh, uh, this sort of solution. Uh, the dirty environment, uh, whether it's a, a mine or offshore drilling uh, uh, or a, in a, a little office in a uh, RV park or something like that. These are some of the typical things that we've seen. Uh, as an example, this is a former NASA base. Uh, on the right, you can see the launch pad. And if you imagine those rockets that went up and uh, they have all this fuel that it's exploding, and sometimes that rocket went to the side and it actually could hit that building. And so the structure of that building was a ton of concrete, and even the windows were 15-inch uh, thick uh, panels. Uh, so there was no signal uh, that was into that building, and one of the carriers called us and said, listen, we have tried every coverage solution uh, there is, um, and we cannot solve this. Uh, the uh, major company that owns this facility now is threatening to to drop their entire enterprise agreement with us unless we can light this building up. And so they call us in, and it happened to be uh, two weeks before we were um, uh, launching GoX. So this was actually our beta customer. Um, and uh, we brought it in, and we actually found a hair of signal in a break room um, above the refrigerator. And it was just enough signal uh, that we could, we could, and it, it was, uh, you know, a constant that we could go ahead and we went, put a splitter in there and uh, delivered an upstairs, downstairs uh, solution. That office had never had signal, and within uh, an hour, uh, you know, they've installed it, they turned it on, and within seconds, texts were coming in, and uh, there's a quote in there I've never uh, gotten messages or, or services in here. They said they literally put their cell phone in their boot as they walked in the door and sealed it up uh, uh, prior to this. Uh, so uh, very, uh, very good uh, results on, on that one. Uh, on the road, then, we uh, are 65 dB in the US and 70 dB everywhere else. Uh, 65 dB is a restriction by the FCC, so uh, we uh, have have it at 65 dB um, in just the U.S. Uh, on that one, and we have again uh, fleet, uh, marine, and trucking uh, partners that have deployed uh, with this product uh, thus far. Um, just to show you, I have kind a question. Of a, Dean. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Uh, there was a question a, a few minutes ago. Uh, actually, they were kind of they were sort of related. Do we need to notify the carriers when we install this system? Um, the answer is no. Uh, you do not. We have already been approved. Uh, you do not need to do that now. Okay. Uh, so in next, fact, the, the, next... the car carriers now have become a lead source uh, for, for partners now. If you okay. have those local uh, relationships, uh, with carriers, um, it, you know, there's sometimes a information, not this information doesn't always get to every single, you know, the thousands of uh, guys that are in the field, uh, but in, in pockets, uh, you definitely, uh, you know, you show them what you can do with what's endorsed at their headquarter level, and they'll give you leads is what we've found. Okay, so there was one more question. So is the mobile product uh, a one carrier or a single carrier or a four carrier booster? That's a great question. So it is a uh, one carrier at a time. So uh, in, we haven't come across really a need uh, beyond uh, one carrier at a time, but it has the ability to switch from carrier to carrier. Um, just like I said, you could switch between modes from uh, mobile to fix. You can also switch between carriers uh, with the app, both online and offline. Um, That's great. Thank you. OK, we're good. <laughs> sure. So here is the 
here is a, an example uh, of a, a law enforcement um, in Las Vegas uh, had some issues with both patrol cars and uh, stations along the highway. Uh, this is roughly a 150 mile uh, stretch altogether. Um, you can see on the left you, where there's big sections that there is uh, uh, no coverage. Uh, and then uh, you have several spots of bad coverage. So same vehicle, um, we, we had uh, the patrol car uh, go down the road and then the patrol car go down the road with it on. Uh, we went from uh, no coverage to complete full coverage throughout uh, the trek. And uh, there was a couple spotty periods uh, in in there, meaning not great uh, coverage, but it was a, a huge difference for them. They immediately uh, put the uh, our product in all of their cars and then the stations along the way as well. Dean, one question. One question: um, Is the local user able to make the switch between the carriers? Yes, uh, it's with. It's a wave app uh, that they have on their phone, and it's just, it takes seconds, uh, quite literally. Okay, thank you. So next uh, example or use case, um, we have uh, some, uh, a tug uh, boat fleet uh, that is uh, down in uh, the Mississippi River area. Uh, again, uh, just going down uh, the river uh, in those brown water situations uh, and just the construct of the boat, uh, not great service uh, was available. Uh, we were able to get them up and running very quickly uh, and uh, uh, it was a great uh, uh, a new use case for us uh, with this product. Uh, had a lot of success with this in Australia as well, uh, that uh, marine is probably 10% of our overall sales uh, now that uh, this has gotten going. So very strong. So let's jump in to, to, sell, to Selfie Quattra. Um, and before we get into Quattra, uh, I want to go after uh, – go after and define the market that uh, we were going after when uh, we created the product, when uh, one of the U.S.'s largest or the U.S. largest uh, carrier came to us and said, could you build uh, uh, something out like this uh, using your technology? We've, we've been blessing your, your technology for the, the smaller footprint. How big can you go? Because the, the middle prize really doesn't have uh, a great solution. There are other solutions, but nothing was great. So um, kind of go over uh, what's available today and kind of how we got there. Um, traditional DAS, uh, the, the, the big guys, the big iron folks, um, wonderful solution, uh, all fiber, but it's really a construction project. Uh, a lot of uh, trenching and uh, permits uh, along the way um, that really doesn't economically make sense above 500,000 square feet. Now, at one point in time, the carriers were subsidizing these things. That has dried up significantly. And uh, even when the carrier said yes, uh, reluctantly to, let's say, a 400,000 square foot uh, building, uh, those projects are pretty well dead uh, uh, now. And that uh, cost uh, goes to the landlord or the corporation or the building owner. And the price of this has just been uh, unfortunately a non-starter. And again, uh, these huge projects and all the different things that you have to do uh, make a pretty long deployment uh, as well, which is seen as a negative within the industry as well. Then there were small cells. Um, it's really great technology. We we actually like this technology a lot uh, as if you have zero signal or you're in a very dense area, 
uh, small cell uh, on the surface is uh, a great uh, product. Unfortunately, it it lacks um, uniform uh, coverage. Uh, its distribution of signal is not great. Um, the solve they tried to attempt uh, uh, by putting many small cells in uh, created interference and noise, and it wasn't easy. Uh, so a lot, a lot of complaints about the deployment of small cell, uh, as it hasn't been as easy as the industry thought it would be. Then there's Wi-Fi calling, um, which uh, you know carriers actually did promote because it it. Uh, was a, a fix for them that maybe you know, the thought was it would be no equipment, uh, but there's a lot of reliability issues and call dropping uh, with this. Uh, there's terrible handoff issues once you get at the perimeter, things like that. And then there's the, the lower end of the market, the passive DAS uh, solution. It's older technology that uh, uh, has a lot of install uh, labor to it as well. Uh, there's a lot of signal loss uh, as you scale the, uh, the solution. It was a good solution for a smaller footprint, but uh, maybe as you get into above 50,000 square feet or even 30,000 square foot, the amount of loss that you're getting uh, can make it, make it uh, a challenge when uh, uh, trying to install it. On top of it all, this is not carrier endorsed. Uh, carriers uh, do not like this uh, uh, type of solution as it is really just blaring signal uh, which can cause interference overall. So what size of buildings are we talking about? What types of buildings are we talking about? Um, it's defined anywhere between 25,000 square feet and 500,000 square feet, uh, from hospitals to hotels to retail environments, uh, think big box stores, uh, to um, office buildings. Uh, I think office buildings and, and uh, if we're gonna say more generic uh, types of buildings, office buildings, parking garages, uh, and uh, man light manufacturing, and warehousing, those sort of buildings uh, are are keyed to this, uh, along with uh, you know apartment complexes. So uh, that is the middle prize. So uh, as I said, about a year ago is when we uh, launched this product, and uh, this earlier this year we uh, did our second generation uh, type of technology. Uh, we have both first and second gen in there. It's not really, I shouldn't say first and second gen. It's just two different flavors. One's a single carrier uh, device and the other one has a multi-carrier uh, or, or, or dual carrier uh, capability. So um, what is self by Quattra? Well, first and foremost, we consider ourselves both a friend of the operator and the integrator uh, as we are uh, creating uh, helpful paths to make uh, both of their lives easier. Uh, we're an all digital uh, CAT 5e solution, so uh, traditional buildings uh, should be uh, already wired in, in many cases uh, with this, and if not, uh, it's a real easy thing to wire. So it's a, a one day job uh, to, to install CAT 5, and there's many CAT5 installers. This is a, an IT skill set uh, that's out there. So um, there is, you get all the be benefits of uh, digital, uh, no signal loss, uh, it's power over RF, it's power over, uh, uh, power in, uh, over ethernet rather, and RF over ethernet, um, and uh, delivers a 100 dB gain which is a thousand times stronger than that uh, the other you know booster repeater solutions that are out there when off in off air, or it can be in supercell mode uh, and tether to this small cell. And where I said we like the small cell technology, we like it because it it is a, a backhaul solution that uh, 
uh, you know, can solve that problem of densification if if that problem exists uh, in the building. Now, if you're, you're curious, um, in these two different modes, uh, which one's a more popular one? It's it's probably skewed a little higher to off air right now, uh, but supercell is taking off uh, uh, more if a small cell is something you want to get in into. So the solution can be configured as a single or dual or a multi uh, carrier, all depending upon what you need. And it can be a mixed match uh, of things. Um, it's set Dean, up. Dean, sorry, can I interrupt, yeah. sorry, interrupt you? Yeah, uh, I have a question that actually was asked very early in the presentation. So uh, I guess he was anticipating. Um, can the 1000 Quattro 1000 version be installed multiple times within the same building to offer Talus, Rogers, Fido, those are Canadian carriers, um, to offer service? If so, should the radios be separated? And if so, how much separation between antennas and doors? Wow, you're getting you're getting technical on me. I can answer the <laughs> Sorry, first part, okay. first part uh, pretty easily. Yes, multiple Quattro 1000 systems can be installed in an environment we do it every day so um that and that giving you multi-carrier mimo or even multi-carrier supercell uh if if the carrier has a small cell solution um so yes uh the distance between them and kind of layout i will let a solution architect uh, kind of field that one and we can cover that in a follow-up um, because I don't want to I, I don't want to speak out of school uh, on that I I have a I have we have standard templates of how uh, to do the mix and match with uh, multi-carrier um, that we do promote uh, to to give you the necessary separation uh, that, that you would need Okay, great. Thank you. I've just had a couple of other questions that sure. may also we might have to take offline, but I'll, I'll throw them out there anyway. So the first one was what's meant by aiming tool? Sure. And second question was, do you use a daisy chain for donor antennas to serve the NU? I ask this because the 2000 isn't approved. Oh, sorry. That's <laughs> sorry. That's from another question. So sorry. do you use a daisy chain for donor antennas to serve the NU? We have used, we haven't, our partners have used the daisy chain uh, and the aiming tool, I'm gonna go over that in just a second. So I'll, I'll hit that kind of in line with the presentation. Okay, uh, and again, uh, how exactly, you know, the number of antennas needed, uh, we can go over that at the solution architect uh, uh, level um, and any other technical uh, question. Uh, for that matter. All right, so uh, I want to give you a, a kind of a, fr a better framing of how this all works. Um, we have one network unit to up to four coverage units, um, and that is called a system. Um, so uh, you can have scale into as many systems as, as you need. Uh, we can have it in that supercell mode in which you would need a small cell interface uh, to talk uh, back and forth uh, with that small cell. But you can see the one NU to four CUs, and that's roughly 50,000 square feet uh, of, of coverage with that. Or you can do off-air, and off-air off -air MIMO uh, is going to be your Quattro 1000 uh, unit. Uh, you are going to have a panel antenna, and that's directional. Uh, and off-air off multi-carrier is going to use an omni uh, donor antenna, and that's with the Quattro 2000. So these are the various elements uh, that you can see uh, in that. There is a range extender, uh, so um, that can extend uh, the the distance in between the NU and the CU is 100 meters. It can be extended to 200 meters uh, with a range extender. All right, so here's a, a graphic that gives you more of a, a real life building uh, or, or 
of how this sort of thing gets set up um, and some of the value propos proposition. So um, ease and accuracy for the installer, that is, again, what the, the product was built around. Uh, it's all digital. It deploys in days. Uh, that It's an RF over Ethernet, power over Ethernet. We do have uh, IB tools uh, and templates set up, but it doesn't require uh, IB wave uh, tools. Uh, but we do have that uh, for those bigger uh, deployments if that's how the sh your shop works. Uh, I'll go over some other tools that we have. Um, we are a thousand times greater that 30 dB uh, of extra uh, is a thousand times. Um, no signal attenuation with this sort of solution. Uh, and that is a real, when we listen to, when we're designing this, we listen to the integrators. That's one of the biggest things that uh, they complained uh, about. Um, we in, intelligently optimize uh, to the environment. It is uh, delivering just the right amount of signal that you need. It's not blaring. Uh, that, thus, this no, no interference uh, claim. Um, and it's easy to monitor with the wave platform. To get into that small cell uh, a little bit deeper, you can kind of see a small cell without uh, Quattra and a small cell with uh, Quattra. It distributes that signal in a better way, uh, just because it has, you know, a multiple uh, multiple units to, to deliver it more evenly. So let's talk about the the aiming tools that we have. So it starts with, there's a physical uh, side of this. Uh, there, there's a bracket uh, that we uh, have built that has eight positions controlled with a pin. And then it integrates with the Wave uh, uh, software. So basically you put it in position one, you do a reading at one, you put it in two, you do a reading at two. And you're right there. So no, no more two guys doing this. One guy can do this and just do the shift, press results. Do the shift, press results. So this optimizes and makes aiming uh, so much easier than what you're used to dealing with in your past. Again, I'll say built for and friend of the integrator. Uh, I'm going to show you the estimator tool. Uh, we have IB Wave te templates. I mentioned that. Uh, I think there are 40 templates uh, available uh, that would uh, get you rolling on any basic design uh, that's available for download. Uh, an all-digital solution, uh, the Antenna Boost technology that with the aiming tools, and then Wave itself. So let's talk about the, the bomb estimator tool. Um, we've created a, uh, an intelligent survey that you can go in after doing uh, your, your site walk or getting basic inputs together. And uh, you can put elements about your building. Um, you know, how many levels, what type of materials, how many walls. Uh, and by putting this information in, uh, you you can uh, create a rough estimate of what's going to be needed uh, on the equipment side for the cell fi equipment. Obviously, the cabling stuff and all that that's on your side, um, but it, it will give you a bomb for the cell fi uh, equipment that makes your life a little easier when creating estimates. Um, we uh, are our head of our our solution architects, our field engineering group said they put this tool up against IB Wave any day. Um, it's that accurate. Uh, so it saves you a lot of steps in the pro process and allows you to uh, give more accurate bids uh, right out of the gate. We have a full uh, certification program uh, for our uh, resellers, in which hopefully all of you become. Uh, we get you through that training and you become self-i certified. Uh, we do require this to sell uh, 
uh, Quattra, uh, and that number is actually old now. Uh, we have a couple hundred of these now uh, in the U.S. Um, but this is uh, this is the program that we have. It's a, uh, a combination of uh, online training, and we will do um, visits. If any integrator wants to visit here, we will do uh, training in person um, through our solution architect group, and they do webinars as well. So if uh, uh, you see this is a big part of your business and want to engage fully with your team, we would welcome you here. So I'm going to end the quattro on some case studies uh, that we've done uh, on apartment complex, the hospital, uh, oil and gas, uh, hotel, and a manufacturing plant. So the, here's a, a 400,000 square feet, roughly 10-story apartment complex uh, in New York. Uh, it needed uh, uh, improvements. Uh, with really all the carriers as uh, the, the apartment itself uh, did not have uh, great uh, coverage. They were losing tenants over it uh, and they needed a fix. Um, they looked at other solutions and they, they went with us uh, on this. And uh, uh, shortly after uh, we, we did a tenant survey and uh, the, they were amazed that they they had not seen coverage in that building before, and it, it was like all systems were go for them. So, um, building typical uh, apartment complex in New York, full of concrete, full of metal, and just could not uh, penetrate indoors. Uh, but we got up and running uh, uh, very quickly uh, with this project. Next one is around a ho hospital. Um, and this was uh, specifically around AT&T. Uh, they had a, a passive DAS booster uh, in uh, the facility, uh, but it was not performing well. So uh, we came in uh, to help the integrator uh, and to solve uh, their problems, and we're up and running uh, in a rel relatively short period of time uh, as well. The labs were in the center of the hospital, uh, no windows and thick walls and lots of equipment. And we were able to get this uh, uh, served very quickly. Dean, uh, sorry, I've yes. got one question related to the case studies. Uh, how many systems were needed for each of these solutions? Um, I can probably give details offline i off the top of my head i don't have the notes with me on each of these but uh we can give you details on each one of these on how many end use and cus uh were needed uh any e in each case in fact i think on this particular apartment complex one for example uh that is a case study that is online it's downloadable it has a building uh, that shows the, the end use and cus that were used uh on okay that. Okay, great, thank you. You know, I will have more questions. There's just a couple that people have asked, but I'm going to wait for the end after you've done your case studies. Sure. Thanks. Um, so uh, next up was a, a hotel. Uh, this was uh, another one that had a solution uh, already in place, but it could not reach uh, the, the, the basement levels of this hotel where there's conferences and things like that and, and rooms. And, uh, so they got uh, this one up and running same day uh, is my understanding uh, on this one. It was a game changer uh, for them uh, as this integrator uh, actually goes out to uh, hospitality pretty strong. Uh, and the last one was a, a bottling plant, uh, 400,000 square foot huge metal building basically uh, and bottling plant and warehouse uh, blocked all signal coming in uh, they had gone with uh, uh, a policy that they would be cutting their landlines as is very popular uh, obviously in business now and <laughs> in that move to get rid of the the, the landlines they did not see how bad the cellular coverage was before they made that move. So uh, uh, 
the uh, operations team uh, were having a terrible time uh, with the changeover. And uh, uh, we got called in with uh, one of the integrators in the area and uh, we're up and running in no time. Uh, again, huge, huge square footage uh, space uh, in, in that example. So where I'm gonna end this is, uh, you know, within my function, uh, we have tools available for you. Uh, we have a, a site, uh, selficot.com slash branding. Uh, basically, pictures of product, descriptions, um, videos, uh, marketing material, anything that you would need to create either a website, an advertisement, um, as you're building out your bids, uh, any things that, that you want to, you know, put some logos and uh, things on, all that's there for you uh, to help you uh, marketing, uh, market uh, your solutions. Um, we have white papers available. We have webinars. We have case studies available uh, for you, uh, whether video or 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 paper. Uh, and uh, we're we're a resource for you uh, through Alliance. So with that, if you, okay, thank you have. I have a, just a couple of questions. <laughs> yeah. um, so they are going back to, I'm pretty sure when we were talking about Quattra. Um, yeah. When you say multi-carrier, is there a limitation of the number of carriers per system, two or four? Yep. So, so each system can do um, two. Uh, so uh, each NU can do two. So uh, on the, and this is a U.S. solution, not a Canadian solution at this right. point. Uh, it's either AT&T and Verizon or Sprint and T-Mobile. Um, so there's two flavors. They're at the same hi hardware, and it is a setting. So you can um, you know change them back and forth uh, if you needed to with your environment you decided you didn't need all the all of that equipment uh, on on the sprint and t-mobile side or the at&t you could switch it to the other and that that's through the wave uh, and related to uh your roadmap um any plans for a public safety play that's a great question uh we are on record that we are we are definitely working on some some public safety uh, products uh, in the in the near future. So we're excited about that and entering uh, that fray uh, as uh, public safety is going all all cellular. So uh, and FirstNet uh, definitely uh, we see is driving uh, some of that. Okay, great. And there's one more question. I think it's, I'm not too sure if you'll know the answer, but we'll definitely take it offline afterwards uh, for Don. Um, when do you think the 2000 will be available in Canada? That's a great question. And I do not know the answer uh, to, to that. Um, but stay we'll tuned. Stay yeah. tuned. Yeah. Uh, thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, Dean, thank you very much. This has been a fantastic webinar. We've had a lot of people paying close attention, so that tells me that there's a lot of interest. So um, to everyone out there, just a reminder, I, I will, if you want a copy of the PDF, send me a quick note. Um, otherwise, we will be sending out as, as soon as possible a link to where you can watch the webinar as much as you want, whenever you want. <laughs> um, and uh, reach out to anybody here at Alliance, even just me, if you'd like to get some contact info for uh, the right salesperson to deal with to get some more help. And uh, training, training, Selfie, I think you mentioned your training. Uh, they have a fantastic setup for training online, so uh, we can help you get set up with that as well. Thank you. And um, thanks again for attending our webinar, and I hope to uh, see you again soon. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Have a, have a great one.